Hello world, searching online, I found out that when it comes to Tokyo's public toilets, it's safe to say that they are the world standard. Is it though? So, what does crew care commercial cleaning in New Zealand think makes Tokyo's public toilets the standard? Not only are the facilities extremely clean, but they also boast technological advancements. For one, their bidets have multiple buttons to adjust water pressure and angle. You can also activate ambient sound to mask toilet noises. Okay, so it's the cleanliness and tech. They also often have baby seats for kids and toilet paper that is flushable. Huh, I know I've been to some places in the world that don't want you to flush the toilet paper, but I didn't know this would be a major point in favor of Tokyo's toilets. I'm sure that others would argue that it's the cool designs, like this glass toilet that goes opaque when it's being used, or this work of art that can be operated using your voice. Hi, toilet. Toilet <laughs> but what I primarily think of is that when I need to go, and I have to go often because I've been an H2O homie since before the term even existed, there's almost always a publicly accessible toilet close by, it's actually open, and it's clean. Like Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park said, now Where does he think he's going? <laughs> when you gotta go, you gotta go. All right, so I was driving around and I need to go pee and I saw, oh wait, there's a park. So I'm going to go to the bathroom because there's always a bathroom by the parks and let's check it out. Here we go. And Western style as well. But in most parks like this, there's probably, oh, we got soap, look at this. It's kind of rare, but it's all good. So I actually spent a lot of time compiling all the different things I think you could use to judge a public toilet. Does it have toilet paper? Is the toilet style sit down or squat? Is there soap? Is there running water? Is there a bidet? I want to get into all those little details, but the overarching conclusion I came down to is that people need a clean place to do their business where and when they need to. And bathrooms need to be able to accommodate people of different needs, whether they're in a wheelchair, have a colostomy bag, are using a cane, or don't fit into a binary gender category. So does Japan have toilets where and when you need them? I'll first share my personal experiences so you can understand the different places you can find toilets. And then after that, we'll get into the data. But yeah, I've always been able to find a toilet anywhere in Japan. If I'm traveling by train, unless it's a very tiny station in a rural area, I've always found a toilet. If I'm traveling by foot or bike, I simply need to find a park which almost always has a toilet. And the thing I think is handy is that in dense walkable cities like Tokyo, there are parks every few hundred meters. Even if it's a tiny pocket park, there's still a good chance that they'll have a toilet. If I'm traveling by car, then convenience stores and parking or service areas always have a toilet available. So no matter how I'm traveling or where I'm traveling to, there's generally a toilet available within five to 10 minutes of where I am. At worst case, it's maybe 30 minutes, like in Totori, the least populated prefecture in Japan. You can be traveling along some small road and you'll come across a public toilet. For those wondering, it's near a trailhead for hiking, but you'll find toilets like this at observation points and other areas where visitors might stop. And if you go really remote, like at the top of a mountain, you can still find toilets. And this is not one of those touristy Japanese mountains with gondolas. This is a proper hike up Mount Shirakami. Sure, it's not a flush toilet, and you need to take the toilet paper with you, but come on, it's quite handy. So the question you might be asking is if the availability of toilets is anything special or not. I mean, anecdotally, the only part of Japan that I've ever had a hard time finding a toilet was in Iriomote Ishigaki National Park, a protected island in the south of Japan where I was doing a jungle tour with my family. We were told in advance that in order to preserve the natural ecosystem that we wouldn't be able to relieve ourselves in nature they did have an emergency disposable toilet area just in case. And yeah, I did make use of it. And surprisingly, I don't have pictures of the toilet. But personal experience aside, let's look at the data as to how many public toilets there are in Japan. And I went on a bit of a journey trying to find that data. If you do a quick internet search, you'll probably come across this nice infographic, which lists Iceland as the country with the most public toilets per capita at 56 per 100,000 residents. I think this kind of makes sense, since they only have a population approaching 400,000, so you only need about 200 public toilets to hit that number. 
If you scroll down a bit, you'll find Japan, which is listed as having 11. This doesn't look like anything impressive at all. If you scroll down even more, the source of the data is pplace, which doesn't even exist as a website anymore. So, to get more reliable data, I had to go directly to the sources. I was able to find that for the 23 special wards of Tokyo, which has a population of 9.7 million, there are 4,151 outdoor public toilets. This works out to 43 toilets per 100,000 residents. I realized that Tokyo's 23 wards aren't the whole of Japan, but if you put these numbers against that infographic, Tokyo is all of a sudden near the top of that list. But the thing about that number is that it's only counting the outdoor public toilets. When we zeroed in to one of Tokyo's wards, Chiodaku, and counted the number of indoor public toilets found in community centers, libraries, city halls, and fitness centers, we found that the total number of public toilets increased by more than 50%. If we assume that the other wards have similar ratios, then the number of indoor and outdoor public toilets in Tokyo is more like 60 per 100,000 residents. That would put Tokyo at the top of the list. And if you want to be practical as to what the general public will use to relieve themselves, there is a whole category of toilets that are not counted, publicly accessible private toilets. These are toilets found in office buildings, convenience stores, train stations, malls, and hotels. If you're wondering about the office buildings, there are often food floors filled with restaurants, so it's normal for the average person to go there, eat, and use the facilities. The expectation for all these places is that you'd be a customer, whether it's buying a rice ball at the konbini or riding the train. However, washroom doors are not locked by key, and you generally don't need to ask permission to use the facilities, so in practice, you can easily use them without paying anything. Conveniently, Chiodaku did a count of them in the lead-up to the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games, and they vastly outnumbered the amount of public toilets. So much so, that in Chiodaku, there are 398 public and publicly accessible but private toilets per 100,000 residents. Now, Chiodaku doesn't have many residents, only 66,000, so I think it's easy for the numbers to get skewed high. Just like in Iceland, where I'm assuming that the large number of tourists versus local population also skews the numbers. If you only consider Japan's convenience stores, there are 56,000 for Japan's population of 126 million. That's 44 convenience stores per 100,000 residents. Now, not all convenience stores have toilets. Some are located in office buildings or train stations, which would provide their own facilities. But it's a good bet that if you find a convenience store, you'll either find a toilet inside or close by. Now, instead of Tokyo, what if I looked at a very small town? I recently stayed in Kofucho in Totori, which has a population of only 2,700. I can easily count five public toilets in the area, which would give a ratio of 185 toilets per 100,000 residents. If you add in the publicly accessible private toilets, this number would more than double. In this area, I think it's the lack of population that makes it easy to skew the numbers high. So perhaps looking at the number of toilets per square kilometer is a better data point. If again, you do a quick internet search, you'll find that Paris comes out on top with 6.72 toilets per square kilometer. This must undoubtedly include their 400 self-cleaning senesets, which are universal toilets that one person can use at a time. Tokyo isn't included in this list, but the ratio of outdoor public toilets per square kilometer in Tokyo's 23 special wards is 6.7, which is basically the same as Paris's stat. Of course, this doesn't include Tokyo's indoor public toilets, which would probably bring that number closer to 10. Another thing to consider is that most public toilets in Japan usually serve at least three people at a time, which means that number could be closer to 30. But hey, if you took Paris or Iceland and really dug into the data, perhaps their numbers would be vastly boosted as well. So even though I spent a lot of time combing through the data, I'm not entirely convinced that it means that much. The thing that I do know is that personally, no matter where I've traveled to in Japan, I've been easily able to find a toilet, whether it's a 100% free public toilet or a publicly accessible private toilet where payment is optional. All right, so despite talking about the number of toilets, this is probably not what people online think about when they say Japan's toilets are awesome. Part of it is that they're clean. I won't pretend the toilets are always sparkling clean, but I generally find them to be well maintained. Now I think you can attribute this to two main things, the people cleaning and maintaining them and the people using them. But a third factor to consider is the number of users. If a toilet is only getting 10 users a day, once a day cleaning should be sufficient. But if the toilet is getting 1000 users, then that frequency would need to be higher. So we inquired with a few wards around Tokyo, and it seems like the standard frequency of cleaning for outdoor public toilets is once a day, with higher traffic facilities getting cleaned twice a day, and very high traffic getting cleaned up to three times a day. This tells me that there's a big enough gap in cleaning times that in order to stay clean, the toilets have to be respected by the users as well.
I covered this in a previous video about how Japan keeps clean, but students in elementary and middle school are required to clean up their school's bathrooms. They don't have a janitor for this task. Whatever mess they make, their classmates are going to have to clean it up, so there's that social pressure to keep things nice and tidy. I think this carries over to their usage of public bathrooms as well. Researching about why there's a lack of public washrooms in North America, I came across this study by the University of Toronto that found that undesirable behaviors associated with homeless people, including vandalism, drug use, and sexual activity, have repeatedly been named as leading reasons for the closure of existing public toilets and the reluctance to provide additional public toilets. I made a series about homelessness in Japan, and during that, I found out that Japan doesn't have a large homeless population. Among many reasons, there's a lack of hard drug usage. So there's not a large population of users that will be shooting up in bathrooms, creating a dangerous environment. And unlike in the West, there wasn't a big deinstitutionalization movement, which means many of the seriously mentally ill didn't end up on the streets. Researchers found that a key setting for overdoses in BC is bathrooms. Every month in BC, more than 50 overdoses happen in bathrooms. In Vancouver, drug use in bathrooms is a very real problem, which is why you'll have to ask for keys or passcodes for private bathrooms, like at this coffee shop, or why they have this insanely annoying sound at this bathroom in the park. It's obviously there to prevent anyone from wanting to stay for any longer than absolutely necessary. That doesn't stop quick vandalism, as you can tell from these burn marks and this painted over graffiti, but I'm assuming it does help to minimize it. But beyond those more serious issues, there's also often a simple lack of respect for the space, whether it's leaving garbage on the ground, not flushing the toilet, or not getting your business on the toilet seats, floors, or walls. Again, I'm not saying Japanese residents are perfect, but I think most would agree that Japan doesn't have the same level of problem with its users that North America has. Ah. Oh, people left garbage in there. And you know what? Even the fancy Tokyo Toilet Project has been subject to vandalism when a couple of their toilets were graffitied and damaged. The Tokyo Toilet Project, by the way, is the one where they hired star architects to design 17 public toilets around Shibuya. One of the creators for the project and the chairman of the Japan Toilet Association, yes, they have an association, had this to say about the project. While Japanese toilets are clean and boast some of the most advanced technology in the world, public toilets still have a negative image of being dark, dirty, smelly, and scary. The toilet is not just a place to defecate, but a small private room in the city where people can take a breather and refresh themselves. In order to maintain and promote comfortable public restrooms, it is important that everyone involved in such restrooms, including the designers, builders, users, and those involved in maintenance, become attached to the restroom and think, this is my restroom. To me, that really spells out what makes Japan's public toilets successful. It's the attitude of, this is my restroom, from everyone involved. But as much as outsiders like me might think Japan's public toilets are great, it's not what Japanese themselves think. By far, the thing that both Japanese men and women want in a bathroom, outside of their home, is cleanliness. And in fact, among women, the use of outdoor public toilets is incredibly low. 52% don't even use them, and 38% seldom use so only 10% even use it on a regular basis. With men, it's different. Only 20% never use, and there's a good 30% chunk that do use it on a regular basis. The reason the numbers are so low is because they either think the toilets aren't clean or aren't safe. Now, an area that Japan has done an exceptional job in is creating universal toilets that are accessible to anyone. It's becoming a standard in all new builds, and I'll show a few of them. This one is located at a parking service area where you can pull right up to the toilet. It's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of toilets that can accommodate people at all stages of life. This one even has emergency buttons for those who need help. Okay, Apple, lie down. Ah, yeah, this is. Yeah. This is an for using the yeah. <laughs> okay, this is actually one of the nicest public bathrooms I've seen. This is in Narita Airport. Look at this. Wow. If you look past the surface level things like the hanging lights and tiles, which I think look great by the way, you'll notice a lot of useful design features and that different stalls will specialize in different things. The regular stalls all have washlets, or in other words, bidets, but they have a few bigger stalls for those with special needs. This has change stations. The first is a platform that pulls out so you can take your shoes off, stand on it and change your clothes. And of course, this one is for changing babies or toddlers. Over in the corner, there's an extra sink by the toilet the purpose of, I'm actually unsure of. 
Outside of the men's washroom is where the universal washroom is found. It has a sink on the left for people with colostomy bags. Those are bags that collect body waste, whether it's because of cancer or an inflammatory bowel disease. And next to the sink is a multi-purpose table, which can be used for adults that need toilet or dressing assistance. While all the sit-down toilets have baby holders, I think having them next to the urinals is also a nice touch. So in Japanese, the universal toilets are called datademo, which literally translates as anyone can use. They always have wheelchair access, but sometimes you'll hear the term barrier-free used for wheelchair access as well. If you're ever unsure of what accommodations a toilet has, they usually have simple iconography on the outside. Another interesting feature found in some public toilets are AED devices, which are automated external defibrillators that can restart someone's heart in the case of cardiac arrest. It's good. To wrap things up, I want to address some of the good and bad things about Japanese toilets. Perhaps the number one thing I've heard from people that shocks them is that often, urinals are very visible from the outside. <laughs> the head of the Japan Toilet Association had this to say about the phenomenon. Public toilets have an open design because Japanese want to be able to see inside before entering. The reporter then explained that it's to make sure no one's lurking in the loo. And simple designs without privacy walls take up less space and are cheaper to construct. You may find visible urinals surprising since toilet stalls, on the other hand, do provide full privacy with no gaps on the sides of doors. What is now being rectified more and more is the lack of soap or hand dryers. Like in these washrooms on the riverbank, they all have running water, but soap isn't to be seen. Even this fancy Tokyo toilet doesn't have soap at their hand washing stations. And I checked inside and no, there's no soap there either. Although I should point out that after COVID, I have noticed an increase in places that carry soap. A really good thing in my books is that most outdoor toilets I've encountered are open 24-7, 365 days a year. In North America, I've often seen them close for the night, or how like this viewer sent in, for the season. But in Japan, outdoor toilets are almost always open. A few decades ago, squat toilets were much more common. But the standard nowadays is western style toilets, and they do often come with bidets and heated seats. As with many locations around Japan, there is often no garbage bins, although women's facilities will have a small waste bin for feminine hygiene products. Most toilets do have little hooks for bags, umbrellas, or jackets, even next to urinals, which is always convenient. That's a seat cleaner, by the way, which is kind of handy. One thing that they don't all have, but I think is a good idea, are these disinfectant sprays that you can put on toilet paper to wipe the seat with. Something I didn't notice until I looked at all the footage is that they usually have regular mirrors as opposed to polished metal or nothing at all. I feel safe in attributing the common occurrence of mirrors to the lack of vandalism. But one of the biggest things I enjoy... There's always water beside the toilet so you can wash your hands, have a drink of water, all the water is drinkable, safe. All in all, while I think Japanese toilets aren't perfect, I still find them pretty awesome. What are public toilets like where you're from? And actually, I did get some photos from a few of you in the community. In Singapore, something I found interesting was that there's a special card that senior citizens and people with disabilities have that they can tap to use the handicapped toilet. In the mall, they have special rooms for nursing mothers, which is actually very similar to Japan. At one of their upscale malls, they have flowers and vases, a terrarium, and air fresheners with lovely scents. On the outside, they even have a display showing how busy the room is. The only thing they seem to be missing are bidets. In Vienna, Austria, the public toilet costs 0.50 euro for anyone over 14. They have a nice classic look. And in India, I received a few images of different toilets. The smart public toilet is a coin-operated self-washing toilet. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.